Now we're gonna talk about Foley catheters. So we have an in and out catheter like this, and also an indwelling catheter like so. So Kat, explain to us what an in and out catheter is. So an in and out catheter is just gonna be for a patient who's got a little urinary retention that you expect to resolve easily, or if you just need a specimen and your patient's not able to give you one. Now, it's important to know that these kits can vary somewhat, but it's gonna tell you on the package what all is in there, and it actually is packaged in a way that you have the things that you need first on top. So what we're gonna do next is just get our patient ready. Um, so we're gonna tell her what's going on, we're gonna expose only what we need to, and we're gonna get her legs ready. The other thing is, many hospitals now require two nurses to be at bedside in order to um, place a catheter because caudy rates are so high, uh, catheter-associated urinary tract infections. Mm. So we're going to get her set up. One of the biggest things is having the bed raised and having the patient level so that you're not leaning over and hurting your back. And if you have a really difficult placement, you can actually put something under their buttocks to raise um, the urethra and meatus so that you can actually access them better. And everybody does this a little bit differently, but honestly, as long as you're maintaining sterile technique, there's lots of different ways that you could do this. So some people will fold this at the end of the bed to use that for their trash can. I happen to have the trash can right here so that it's gonna be easy for me to just drop things in. Now, once I start to open this, it's gonna be real important for me to keep in mind what's clean and what's sterile, okay? Now, this one has just a little Pericare uh, kit in it, and most of the newer packages do come with this. If your package doesn't have this, you can also just use a washcloth to clean your patient with. And then this is just a simple waterproof pad. Now, I only need clean gloves for this. Um, this is a, basically a dirty procedure, and it's just to wipe away anything that I'm worried about. Um, if, they, if the patient had feces first, then you would have wiped that away before you even get to this part. And because this is clean, I can just continue to fold it as I need to in order to make sure that everything is clean. Now and in the future, the meatal opening is the part that I really need to get the cleanest, okay? So you can clean out the outside, but that's not the important part. It's mm -hmm. really the inside. You never want to insert infection or introduce bacteria into that urethra. That's huge. Now I'm going to take off my gloves, and a lot of kits will have um, something right here for you to be able to do hand hygiene since you've done basically a dirty procedure first. Um, so ideally you'll have some hand hygiene here whether it's your alcohol, whether you need to step away before you open your kit and wash your hands. But ideally, you just have some hand sanitizer right here. All right, so I'm gonna open this kit, and the outside edges, of course, are things that you can touch. The inside edges aren't. And every kit could be packaged a little bit differently. Now, what you'll see here is that they've actually put the gloves on this side. And then here's that hand sanitizer I was talking about with the gloves, okay? So I'm gonna set my gloves down. And one of the things is uh, always, especially in nursing school, always have an extra pair of sterile gloves because you never know when you're gonna break sterile field. And... Especially for a Foley catheter, oh. you really have to have a pair of gloves. And if you've got somebody helping you, they should have a pair of sterile gloves too. You can always put them back if you don't use them. Never want to walk away from your sterile kit open. You always want to make sure you have eyeballs on that thing. Now, I'm sterile, and this is sterile. So I can do anything that I want to in this space, except reach over the top. Okay, so I can't just lean into it, but I can touch any of this that I want to. Okay? Now, I'm going to take a minute and look at my kit, because the patient's not going anywhere, okay? So I'm going to take a minute and look and see what I have. So this catheter is covered up, and I can go ahead and take that cover off. Okay, now this is the part that really has to be sterile, so I'm definitely not going to let it flop anywhere, okay? So I love it, and I want it to stay good. Now I can drop that anywhere because everything's sterile. Okay, now what else do I have? I have a sterile drape for the patient. This is all connected to the catheter, 
Okay, so this is actually going to be the pieces that we use to secure it later. Okay, so it stays hooked there. There's a specimen container in case I do need a sample right now. There's my iodine swamps. And I can go ahead and open those. Try not to get crazy with them because it will definitely make a mess if you try to rip this off too fast. Oh, they'll splash you. They've got lovely little tears here so that you don't have to try to go hunt for sterile scissors. And you're just going to pull those out and plop them in here. Or you can leave them in here and pull them out one at a time. Either one is totally fine because it's all sterile. So I'm going to set those there. Now what else do I have? You got the favorite part, the lube. Lube the tube. So I have two syringes, okay? One is lubricant and one is fluid to fill the bulb on the catheter, okay? Now, we do not inflate the bulb anymore. We used to, but we don't do that anymore. So what I am going to do is go ahead and attach it to the port so that I'm not fumbling for it later, okay? And again, you don't have to do it this way. This is the way that I like to do it. I go ahead and attach it, and then I don't have to worry about it in a little while. My lubricant, I'm just going to open it. And there's always some sort of little tray here that you can use. And you're going to make sure that that goes completely through there and that it's just getting super duper lubricated, OK? The meatus and the urethra are not going to like what you're about to do. Okay, so the slicker the better. And this is actually a pretty small catheter tube, so we should be in pretty good shape. Now, the tricky part is when you actually do leave your sterile filled, knowing which hand is clean and which hand is sterile. Now, some kits will have multiple of these, so they might have one that has this center opening and then one to put down underneath as a waterproof pad. So you just, again, have to know what you're working with. Um, lots of nurses will throw this piece away, um, but honestly, it's kind of a nice little safeguard for you, okay? So you're gonna fold your hands in the middle of it like this so that you're not touching the patient with that sterile side. And then you're just going to arrange it. Now you see how it flops over? And that's one of the reasons people tend to not fool with it. Um, most facilities really want you to. Um, so we've done that part. Now we're going to clean the patient, okay? So I'm going to pick these up one at a time, okay? And I'm going to make sure that she doesn't have any allergies to betadine or iodine. And I'm going to make sure that I'm cleaning the actual meatus really, really well, okay? So I'm going to start here. And I don't care that... I'm getting betadine all over that. I really want to. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to swipe out. And then I can just drop that on the field if I want. And then I'm going to do that again. And again, I'm starting at the middle because the meatus is the actual important part. And I'm going to clean that area. Exactly. Yeah, so it's always the clean area to the, the, to the dirtier areas. Mm -hmm. So you would never drag this way. You would never drag this way. It's always from the meatus out, mm -hmm. okay? Now, this is now my dirty hand. And this is the only sterile hand that I have. Now, this part can feel kind of tricky. Um, some people will grab the whole kit and bring it over and set it between the patient's legs. Um, some folks will just grab here. This part right here is the only part that you have to keep sterile. Everything else can get floppy and sloppy if it really has to, okay? So you're going to make sure that you have this part in your hand really, really well, no matter what you're about to do next, okay? I'm also going to make sure that I grab here so that I have really good traction on what I'm about to do, okay? So I'm going to go here, and I'm going to visualize that meatus. And if it's hard to visualize, then I might use a flashlight. I might have my partner use a pen light. It just depends. You're probably going to have your overhead light on. And that's just so that you can see as easily as possible. You might even have the patient cough. It can, on females, it can wink at you, the mutus. Now, I'm going to keep threading this until I see urine. Now, you see the sterile part of the catheter is in my hand the whole time. It doesn't flop. It doesn't touch anything. Okay? 
Yep. Now once it's in, we're going to inflate that bulb and hopefully it's in far enough so that when the bulb inflates, it just rests inside that bladder. So once I've gotten it in and I've gotten some urine here, mm -hmm. I'm going to stop and I'm going to insert another inch. So I've done that and I'm going to hold on to this because otherwise the sphincter is going to try to push it out. Then I'm going to inflate this bulb. And if I let go of this, it's actually the, the bulb will push the fluid back out, okay? So I have to keep my hand kind of on that syringe there and then disconnect. All right, so my hand's on the plunger the whole time so that it doesn't disconnect. Now, as you'll see, we're starting to get a little bit more urine here. And her urine is super duper clear, which is awesome. Mm -hmm. Now, let's see what I've got in this other bag. What have I got there? Let's see if we got the clamp to hold this thing in place. Yes. Awesome. We do. So this handy dandy clamp will actually hold the catheter in place on the leg just so that it doesn't get yanked or pulled um, out of the patient. So. Now, sometimes you have uh, just a bag and sometimes you have this great little urine meter. If you're in an intensive care environment, you really have to have the meter. Um, that lets you check their urine every hour and then when this little box fills up, you can just dump it back in the bag and then you don't have to empty it every single time. Now, one last thing um, that is a complication when you're inserting any type of Foley is if it goes in the vagina or it goes in the anus, especially on females, sometimes it happens if patient's overweight or obese, we never want to pull that Foley out. We leave it in place. So leave it in the vagina, leave it in the anus, get a new kit and start all over again. So it's a big hack right there. Cool. So after we place our sticker on there, we always want to document the time and date that this Foley was done. Oh, and, and you're securing it to that leg, so I need to move oh, this to yeah. that side. And always make sure that this is dependent so that we can uh, drain the gravity here. And make sure it's not on the bed rail or anything like that that's gonna move, because um, that would be pretty uncomfortable. So if you don't have one of these handy little security mm -hmm. devices, even just a piece of tape, anything that's gonna keep this from moving and irritating that wall or the skin around it. Um, this one also has a little skin prep in it so that you can put the skin prep down before the adhesive. But honestly, even if, if you just have to use tape, that's totally fine. And then you've got this little device here so that you can secure it to their gown. So while they're up walking around, it doesn't pull on them. Mm -hmm. And then you're gonna clean your patient up and get them comfy. And that's urinary catheters.